Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives, back for a CD vinyl update. Sorry I was away for a few days, took a little bit of time off and uh, spent some time at the lake. Uh, summer's just, I don't know, time is just going so fast. Um, we're already into August and before you know it here, well, where I live in Canada, summer seems really short. Um, you know, I know it's, you know, end of May till, you know, sometimes September's good weather too. So try to take advantage of that also. Anyways, um, also helped my son move. He is was in a city, is in a city that was close to where we are at the lake, and got him all set up and moved into his new apartment, and uh, was able to go to a record shop that I just don't get to, uh, don't get to go to very often. Picked up a really cool item. I'll show you today. But yeah, a tough week last week. It was a little over a, a week ago. We lost. Uh, uh, Mike Howe from Metal Church, you know, uh, Dusty Hill from ZZ Top, you know, who doesn't like a little bit of ZZ Top, and uh, Joey Jordison from Slipknot, uh, rest in peace um, to all, and my condolences to family, friends, fans, you know, you know, it's tough, it's, uh, it's tough, and um, yeah, thinking of these guys for sure. But uh, I had, uh, when I jumped in my vehicle to head out to the lake, I thought, you know what, I am going to grab some metal church and, uh, you know, I'm going to show you a little bit of, uh, a couple of people are asking me, you know, um, I'm not familiar with some of the metal church stuff. What should I check out? Uh, well, the Mike Howe, I am a, I'm a metal church fan all around uh, with uh, David Wayne, uh, Ronnie Monroe, and of course, Mike Howe, but we'll show you some Mike Howe stuff, some essential Mike Howe stuff today. Um, Mike joined the band. Well, first album that he was on was the Metal Church's third album, uh, Blessing in Disguise. These aren't new pickups. I just wanted to show you if you, like I said, if you are newer, go and check these albums out. They're definitely essential Metal Church, uh, essential, essential Mike Howe for sure. So this is Blessing in Disguise. This one, <clears throat> this is actually a music on vinyl reissue. On CD, it's you, very easy uh, to get this one. You can pick it up. This was originally released on Elektra Records, um, produced by Terry Date. This one's, um, <clears throat> I would say this is a kind of a, a really a more polished album compared to what I'll show you next, um, but definitely check this out. I mean, songs like Fake Healer, uh, Anthem to the Estranged, Badlands, um, just just solid, solid um, stuff. And the next album, which um, they went from Elektra Records to, um, they got dropped by Elektra Records and then they got picked up by Epic and they released this absolute, like it is so close for me. Um, I did a ranking on the Metal Church albums, but between Blessing in Disguise and The Human Factor, I, I I think people, this one's harder to get, especially on CD, it's like, it's impossible. This is a um, music on vinyl reissue of Metal Church's uh, fourth album from 1991 um, called The Human Factor. Now this one is a little less polished. Um, this one is produced by, um, I don't know, it's, I'm pretty, well, it's Mark Dodson. Um, I would say this one's a little more, well, the actual, the lyrical, the lyric, con, lyrical uh, content on here is quite deep. You got, you know, subjects like poverty, suicide, things like that, um, child abuse, very uh, dark, but just a phenomenal album. This one contains my overall favorite, uh, Mike Howe, uh, uh, sang song, or song, song that he sings <clears throat> called In Harm's Way. Absolutely brilliant, but don't be afraid to check out this one. This is, a, if you can get a hold of it, first of all, but if not, you know, go on a, check it out on a, a streaming service if you have to. And uh, this is their fourth album, awesome stuff. And then I'm hoping for a reissue on this one. This is underrated. I don't like to use that word too much, but this really is. Uh, the first half of this album just crushes, actually the whole thing is good. 
Um, this is 1993's Hanging in the Balance. Yeah, definitely one of, uh, you could rank this up with one of the stupidest looking covers you'll ever see. But you know what? It's got some character and some killer songs. Check out Gods of, Sec Gods of Second Chance, Losers in the Game. Absolutely awesome song. No Friend of Mine and Conductor, just to name four. But uh, I am really hoping for a reissue on vinyl for this one. So there's my little tribute to Mike Howe, and uh, may he rest in peace. Now let me show you what I've picked up here lately. Uh, today I will show you um, what I picked up from Record Store Day, the second drop. It wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot. Um, the one that I really wanted uh, did not come out, and that was Judas Priest, Best Of. Um, I think it got delayed. Hopefully that comes out on and, uh, Black Friday, which I think is in November. <clears throat> but I did pick up uh, two other items. First one, I am really, really glad I picked this up. I thought at first, do I really need, you know, some live Michael Shanker? But uh, you know what? I, like I said, I am glad I picked this up. This is the Michael Shanker group live at Manchester Apollo 1980. So this has Gary Barden on vocals. We got Cozy Powell on drums, Paul Raymond, keyboards, and um, rhythm guitar. Of course, Michael Shanker. Um, who we got? Chris Glenn on bass. I'm not that familiar with him. But so this is from 1980. So this would be just after the release of his first um, uh, Michael Shanker group album. So what this contains is the set list. I hold that up for you. Well, there's the hype sticker too. If you do see this still laying around in a record shop, um, I highly recommend it. It's, uh, it is really, really good. But what this contains is the whole first album of the Michael Shanker group. And then you have um, a lot of the uh, more popular tracks of UFO when uh, Michael was in UFO. You got uh, songs like Natural Thing, uh, Rock Bottom, uh, Shoot Shoot, Doctor, Doctor, Lights Out, it's all on here, and including basically uh, the entire first album. Let me show you the vinyl. I forget which, um, oh yeah, I think we got some red here again. <clears throat> so this comes on two discs, so I'll just show you one because they're both the same. Red vinyl, uh, Chrysalis label, sounds really, really good. Uh, Definitely need to keep adding some Michael Shanker group to my collection. And the second thing I picked up, picked up is, which if you watched uh, any of my videos before, you know I'm a, a sucker for anything Dio. And actually, I forgot to bring it upstairs here. I just got um, Ronnie's new book in the mail uh, a day ago or so. I'm going to read that and we'll talk a little bit about that also. But I picked up um, this picture disc, Angry Machines. Um, this is, I mean, this is just pure, uh, you know, do I really need this? But it's Dio, so I guess I do. So here's the hype sticker. Hype sticker says, newly created limited edition picture disc to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Angry Machines. So um, this one, first time on vinyl for a rare track called God Hates Heavy Metal. Uh, side B, Angry Machines studio track, This Is Your Life and a live recording of Hunter of the Heart from the Angry Machines tour. So yeah, and here's the back side. Doesn't sound too bad. I mean, picture disc, you get a little bit of surface noise in between, but this is, um, it's one big track, so you don't hear much. So, you know, if you have the volume up a little bit, you're not gonna hear much uh, for that. But that is the only two things I picked up from this drop of Record Store Day and uh, hoping that Judas Priest does come out um, eventually. I've uh, got a couple of CDs, and then I'll show you uh, what else I picked up, including that uh, uh, cool album that I got to pick up at the record store where my son lives. Anyways, here is, um, this is the last album I needed to complete my uh, creator uh, discography. Um, been kind of just waiting to pick this one up for a good price. It didn't it wasn't screaming at me to pick it up, put it that way, but here is uh, <clears throat> Creator's Endorama, ninth album from 1999. 
uh, probably one of their most least popular albums. And uh, you know what, maybe that's a little bit of foreshadowing where this will end up on my ranking. That one, I am just about ready to go. Uh, just like any of the rankings, there is some work to put into them. And um, you know what, there's always those last minute little changes and shuffles. But here's Endorama. Uh, this one is on the, <clears throat> excuse me, Drakkar. Um, yeah, Drakkar label which this actually just got a reissue. This got picked up by AFM Records. So there's a d new deluxe version CD. I think it's a double disc and uh, a vinyl that is up for pre-order right now. <clears throat> Sorry. If you're interested, go over to the AFM Records uh, shop and uh, yeah, check out the pre-order. So there's that one. <clears throat> I've listened, by the way, I've listened to this a few times. It, it's different. We'll put it that way. Uh, tracks that stand out. I think the track that they just re-released too, I think was called um, Golden Age. Uh, second one, second CD I picked up, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is a EP from Primal Fear. This one features uh, Tarja. Now I'm not... Uh, very familiar with Nightwish, but she was the vocalist um, at one point, and I, I don't think she still is. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, or is she still in Nightwish? But um, anyways, this um, EP is kind of, um, they took a track off their latest album called Metal Commando, uh, called I Will Be Gone, and then Ralph Sheepers does a duet with uh, Tarja on it. This is released by Nuclear Blast. Um, here in 2021, like I said, just an EP. So these are a few, uh, besides this, I Will Be Gone um, song. It's a few leftover tracks from probably the sessions from Metal Commando, uh, some that didn't make the album. Um, there's a track called Vote of No Confidence. Um, Leave Me Alone. No, nah, that actually the music on that one is really good. And the lyrics are a little bit corny. Um, and then the last track, track five is second to none. Yeah, nice little, you know, I still think, you know, there's there's bands, because of COVID, they're trying to, you know, get a few things out, whether they're going to, you know, just an EP or uh, there's been a lot more live recordings lately for, you know, they got to get something out to keep uh, some revenue coming in. Uh, there is Tarja right there. And here's a band shot and um so yeah and this is actually primal fear is a six piece but um i think because of logistics too um here's a picture of their sixth member magnus carlson uh, they, i don't think they always can be together and uh, i've actually seen shows on youtube where they um you know they are just a five piece uh, because of those reasons or i think magnus is involved with a lot of other things next up uh, here's a, I picked these up because I saw another pre-order and I, for, uh, on Metal Blade for some Lizzie Borden albums, actually Lizzie Borden's third album called Visual Lies from 1987 and the EP Given the Axe from 1984. And I thought, why have I not picked up these other ones? I used to actually have the two I'm going to show you. I used to have them on cassette years ago. You know, and where they are now, I have no idea. But Lizzie Borden is one of those bands <clears throat> that hard to categorize. But if I had to give you, you know, any indication of where I would land them. Uh, if you're a fan of Wasp, I would put them right in there. Their music, from what I have and what I've heard of their fir first three albums and that EP. And I do have to get into the later stuff. Their music is kind of U.S. power metal a touch of glam, touch of shock rock, um, which, you know, kind of like the Wasp stuff. But anyways, I was able to pick these up locally, um, fairly locally, a couple hours away. But here is um, first um, album from Lizzie Borden called Love You to Pieces from 1985. Metal Blade release. So, yeah, I just... I have said it before, I, I really love Metal Blade releases. This one is actually a reissue from 2017. So, yeah, um, 
no download card in this one, but that's, I think they didn't start put do, uh, putting uh, download cards into their uh, packaging until uh, 2019 or 2020. So yeah, great album. Check out the tracks, uh, uh, Council for the Cauldron, uh, Psychopath, awesome song. Red Rum, American Metal, whole album is just solid. And I do, I do like my 80s metal. And if I can pick up some, you know, good re solid reissues, but here is the inner, kind of a collage on this side. And then you got the ax and that shoe. So this one, oh, what is it on? Opaque slate blue marble, limited to 500 copies worldwide. So yeah, this was reissued in uh, 2017. So, you know, maybe not, you know, um, selling that quickly. I mean, it's still sitting there, but I was uh, glad to still get a copy of it. This one comes with a poster. Uh, actually, the poster's the same on the other side without the Lizzie Borden logo. And I'll quickly show you that vinyl. So what do we say that was? Opaque Slate Blue. Very nice, not 180 gram, probably 140. And the cool metal blade axe logo right there. But definitely happy to add some Lizzie Borden to my collection. And then I also picked up um, their second full length album from 1986 called Menace to Society. I think probably this one might be my favorite overall. Um, I do like Visualize. Visualize is more, a little more on the commercial, you know, touching a little more on the glamminess, but I don't want to uh, say it's, a, you know, a full-on glam album because it's not. But Menace to Society, this one, like I said, came out in 1986. Check out the tracks. Oh, Generation Aliens, awesome. Notorious. Uh, Bloody Mary. Uh, just this whole album is just solid. I don't know if there's lots of tracks that are just... Well, Generation Aliens is, is an awesome track. Um, Brass Tactics. Uh, produced by Jim Farsi and Lizzie Borden. There's the back cover if I didn't show you that already. And that one also comes with a large poster. Like most of the Metal Blade releases do. And this one's cool. This actually has um, the album cover on this side. And then on the back side is like a... Uh, just a drawing of, not the same, but a pretty cool band uh, drawing on this side. We'll fold that up. And the inner, another collage style. Lyrics on the back. And this one came on opaque olive green marble. Uh, again, limited to 500 copies worldwide. And this one, I actually really like this color. I'm, I like my blues and my greens, purples, stuff like that, with a little bit of black marbling in there. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's Lizzie Borden. And if you're interested, go over to the Metal Blade um, shop. There's still copies of this available. And uh, there is a pre-order. And yes, I was lucky to get these locally. Uh, but they do, I checked on Metal Blade, they still have copies and they have the pre-order up for their 1984 EP, uh, Give Them the Axe, and their 1987 uh, third full-length album called Visual Lies. And I got, what do we got here? Two more to show you today, and then that is it. I picked up, um, yeah, I do like, uh, like a little bit of death metal and, you know, for... For what people have gotten gotten me personally into over the past, you know, two or three years, uh, I, I really enjoy. And uh, for whatever reason, people were not um, really promoting the later obituary albums. But then it came a point where I, you know, I thought I'd better check them out. And um, I'm glad I did because their last two albums, uh, Inked in Blood, which came before this one, and this self-title from 2017, just entitled Obituary just it's phenomenal don't don't pass the if you're you know if you're kind of stuck on those first few albums i highly recommend their later stuff too 
just as good. This came out on Relapse Records, and Relapse does an awesome job. Here's the hype sticker. Um, and the cool part about this one, it is on custom butterfly effect with splatter edition limited to a thousand copies. So yeah, this vinyl is super cool. Sounds awesome. Uh, check out, uh, I said my favorite track. Well, check out these tracks. Um, a Lesson in Vengeance, Betrayed, my uh, my favorite song on there, and Turn to Stone. And well, even 10,000 10, Ways to Die, great, great track too. And came with a cool, um, here we go, there's a band shot. And I'm pretty sure I um, these guys are working on a new album. It's uh, 2017 was their last one. So yeah, they're definitely due for a new album. Hope to see that. And this is just credits and uh, yeah, no lyrics on there. <clears throat> and this vinyl is super cool. If you have not seen this one, I was surprised when I pulled it out. It's like awesome. So there it is. Butterfly effect. So same on the both sides and the logo there. And uh, to wrap up this update is the record that I was, uh, that I spotted when I got a chance to run down to the shop when I was helping my son. And I thought, you know what? I already have a copy of this. So I have a, so I'll show you this in a second. This is a, actually I can show it to you now. It doesn't matter. Um, this is Overkill's Killbox 13. I do have another copy of this on a reissue on back on black. Um, I think that one is from 2013 or something like that. But this one is actually on the Vinyl Countdown label, which I have Relics 14 that's on that label. These are This one is basically identical to the Back on Black reissue, but this one is a limited copy, and I wasn't going to get it until I flipped it over and saw uh, this. Limited edition number 666 of 1000. And uh, yeah, I, I had to grab it just literally for that reason. I think there might have been two other numbers that would have got me to pick this up. Maybe number one or maybe one number 1000 or 999. But uh, <clears throat> any other number, if this was number 531, I probably would have just left it behind, to, to be honest with you. But the price was right, and you don't see these very often also. But uh, yeah, pretty cool to have this. And um, gatefold, just on black vinyl. There was no inner inners with it. And it, as far as I can see on Discogs, it is complete. There was no inners in the original. And uh, yeah, this is uh, definitely uh, one of those... Um, I definitely a bit of an underrated overkill album it's kind of in that period where they were you know the mid period i mean the, the past five albums have been phenomenal looking forward to a new overkill album um this year but that is it for this update and uh i always try to keep these around 20 minutes but uh we went a little bit overboard i guess i i guess i did miss you guys for sure and yes i do and uh, i'll be back soon with uh we'll uh get that creator uh, ranking video going and I have a, a little video to do of uh, a few CDs that people have sent me and other little uh, uh, gifts type of things and I'll, I'll put it all in one video and we'll kind of just uh, talk about that. But until next time, stay heavy.